This video contains more examples using the chain rule. So we're going to start with find the derivative of y equals negative 7 over 2t minus 3 squared. So if I did the quotient rule on this, I see that the derivative of the denominator, or my d low, would be a chain rule problem. But I also see that my d high would be 0. So it's actually easier to make this a product rule problem and bring the denominator up and make the exponent negative so that I don't have to deal with the d high of 0 terms. So I see a chain rule also when I make this a product rule, and my inner function here is 2t minus 3. So my u prime would be 2, and my outer function is negative 7 times something raised, or the inner raised, to the negative 2. And the derivative of that, then a negative 2 will come out front, and I'll get 14u to the negative 3. So the derivative of our entire function, then, is 14u to the negative 3 times u prime, which becomes 14 times 2t minus 3 to the negative 3 times 2, which we'll write as 28 times 2t minus 3 to the negative 3, which is a perfectly good answer, but if I wanted to write it as a fraction, so I don't have any negative exponents, it would be 28 over 2t minus 3 cubed. Okay, this example is a good bit more complicated because I see a product rule here where my first function is x squared and my second function is the square root of 1 minus x squared, which is actually going to require a chain rule. So my first function is easy, f is x squared, then f prime is just 2x. But for my g, it's a good bit more complicated. We have g is 1 minus x squared all raised to the 1 half, and then I see that I have an inner function, so we'll let u be 1 minus x squared, and u prime would then be negative 2x, and I have an outer function of u being raised to the 1 half. So my f of u is u to the 1 half, then f prime of u would be 1 half u to the negative 1 half. So, that means my g prime is then 1 half u to the negative 1 half times u prime, or 1 half times 1 minus x squared to the negative 1 half times negative 2x. Now, if I clean this up, 1 half times negative 2x is just going to be negative x times 1 minus x squared to the negative 1 half power. So, the derivative of our entire function is derivative of the first function, f, which would be 2x, times the second function, is 1 minus x squared to the 1 half plus the first function, which is x squared, times the derivative of the second function, which is negative x, times 1 minus x squared to the negative 1 half. And if we clean this up, I can write it as 2x times the square root of 1 minus x squared minus x cubed over the square root of 1 minus x squared. Okay, on this problem, I actually have x over 
x squared plus 4 to the 1 third power. Now I could bring the denominator up and make it a product rule, but since I have an x in my numerator and I actually will have a d high, I'm going to go ahead and use the quotient rule on this. So when I do that, I get low, which is x squared plus 4 to the 1 third, d high is 1 minus high and d low is a little bit more complicated. For d low, I have an inner function that is x squared plus 4, and my u prime would be 2x, and my outer function would be u to the 1 third, and its derivative would be 1 third u to the negative 2 thirds. So when I plug that back in here for my d low, I'm going to get 1 third times u, which is x squared plus 4, to the negative 2 thirds times u prime, which is 2x, all over low squared, which would be x squared plus 4, to the one-third power, when I square that, I get two-thirds power. Okay, so we want to clean this up. I have x squared plus 4 to the one-third power, and I have minus two-thirds x squared times, I'm going to write this x squared plus 4 to the negative 2 thirds in the denominator so I can have a, po a positive exponent all over low squared. And I did that, I rewrote it so I could see that I have a complex fraction, a fraction inside of a fraction and I don't like that. That is not the convention in math. We don't write a fraction inside of a fraction. So I need to get rid of the 3 here and the x squared plus 4 to the 2 thirds. And I do that by multiplying the numerator and the denominator by those inside denominators. Okay, so when I do this, I have to distribute this 3 times x squared plus 4 to the 2 thirds to everything in the numerator, and I will get 3 times x squared plus 4 for my first term. In the second term, the 3's cancel, and the x squared plus 4 to the 2 thirds is going to cancel, and we just get minus. 2x squared, and in the denominator, I just get 3 times x squared plus 4 to the 4 thirds. And if we clean up our numerator here, I see I've got 3x squared plus 12 minus 2x squared over 3 times x squared plus 4 to the 4 thirds. And 3x squared minus 2x squared just gives me x squared plus 12 over 3 times x squared plus 4 to the 4 thirds power. Okay, this one's pretty complicated too. I have a quotient rule inside of a power rule. So it's a chain rule problem, and my inner is 3x minus 1 over x squared plus 3. My outer is just u cubed with a derivative of 3u squared. But we're going to have to do a quotient rule to find u prime. So we get low d high would be 3 minus high, d low would be 2x over low squared. 
So if I distribute my 3, I get 3x squared plus 9 minus 6x squared plus 2x because I have to distribute that minus to that other minus and I make it a positive 2x over low squared and 3x squared minus 6x squared is negative 3x squared plus 2x plus 9 over low squared. So now I have the derivative of my outer function and I have the derivative of my inner function. I need to multiply those together to get our entire derivative. So we're going to get 3u squared times u prime becomes 3 times 3x minus 1 over, sorry about that, x squared plus 3 squared times our u prime was negative 3x squared plus 2x plus 9 over x squared plus 3 squared. And when I look at this, I see that this denominator of this fraction is the same as this denominator. So I'm going to rewrite this as 3 times 3x minus 1 squared over x squared plus 3 squared because I can distribute that uh, exponent over division times my second fraction and then I see that I can combine my denominators they're the same thing squared times the same thing squared so that'll give me x squared plus 3 to the fourth in my denominator and there's nothing that can be combined that way in the numerator, so we just get 3 times 3x minus 1 squared times negative 3x squared plus 2x plus 9.